praise the Lord and welcome to Christ Disciples Institute, the Discipleship School of the Light for All Nations Mission. The Light for All Nations Mission is an international missionary agency that is devoted to discipleship and ministerial training. Tonight we are concluding the course for the three spiritual warfare. We have done part one, part two, and part three last week. This day, Thursday, we are taking part four and the last segment of the course. Now, let us pray. Father, we thank you and we commit this class into your hands. We trust your grace to empower us by your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we have been talking about war spiritual warfare, fighting in the realm of the spirit, taking charge, executing spiritual leadership through prayer, through the word, and through the use of all the weapons of warfare that God has given to us. Scripturally, it is said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles, strategies, tricks of the devil. And having known that, we have described the, 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 the kind of weapon the devil uses in fighting, and all that and all that. And it looked like, oh, spiritual warfare, we are in trouble. Fight, 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 fight. Tonight's topic is believers' victory in Christ. In other words, all this war we are talking about, Christ has already won. Hallelujah. And that victory that Christ has won is our victory. So you are not fighting spiritual warfare, being afraid of losing the battle. You are fighting spiritual warfare to establish your victory. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Say thanks be to God who has given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we sing this song, he has given me victory, I will lift him higher. People think of victory over your enemies, that your, your neighbor who is fighting you, who you think is fighting you, or your family member, or your uncle, yeah, that's a victory. I want to talk about spiritual warfare. We think mainly about those people, people you hate, people you are you don't like, people you think that are that are you know fighting you. But the Bible tells, tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pillar that of stronghold. Say, though we live in the flesh, we do not wage war as the flesh does. Because we believe that the things you see happening negatively in the physical realm is rooted in the spirit. There is the visible realm and there's the invisible realm. And these forces of darkness, as we have described them, uses tools. If you destroy the tool, they will take another tool. What do you do? Deal with the main enemy. Hallelujah. And that is what Jesus Christ came to do. He's not coming to, you are not coming to fight them. You are coming to execute judgment. It's just like you have gone to court. Somebody is fighting over your land, and then you went to court and then you won the case, and they gave you the judgment, and then they gave you some policemen. You are going back to that land, not to go and fight the person, but to what? To execute the judgment, to establish what has already been won. The battle has been won, but you have to go and establish that battle. I had a story years ago, uh, the victory, sorry. I had a story years ago about what happened in America in those days when slavery was, I know, uh, the order of the day. Many people were slaves, and they, they didn't know when the uh, the law was given that slavery has been abolished. You know, slavery has been abolished. They didn't know about that. And so their masters used their ignorance to keep them in slavery. They continued as slaves without knowing that they have been free. So one day, a friend visited those slaves, just to see whether they are still slaves or they are working for the master as you know, workers that are being paid now. And then they, he came and saw them you know, laboring. I said, ah, you are laboring. How much did they pay you for your work? He said, 
pay me for what? Ah, don't talk too much, my master. Which master? Don't you know that the, the, the uh, slavery has been abolished? They say, what? Abolished? They brought out the edict, the law that had been signed and showed them. When they saw it, they were shocked. Their master, when he realized that they have known, he was so scared. They said, sir, look at the date when this thing was signed. You are going to start, you pay us from the time this time was, this thing was signed to today because you have used us for nothing. If not, we will sue you. And the master had no option but to pay because he doesn't want to be sued. What are we saying? The devil knows that he has been defeated. But many of us don't know that Satan has been what? Defeated. We sing the song, Hallelujah, Jesus conquered the war. Hallelujah, Satan, you have been defeated. The Lord reigned in my life today. But yet we live like people that the devil is still the master. Believers, victory in Christ. Now, who is this believer? The believer is the one who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and have accepted his finished work of salvation wrought for us in Christ Jesus and believe that by that they have become one with Christ. They have received the Holy Spirit that make them part and parcel of Jesus Christ. He that is joined with the Lord is one with him in spirit. So a believer is not one who believes in Pentecostalism, Catholicism, and all this in Christianity. It is one who has accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, that person that believeth in him, that will not perish but have eternal life, is the believer. He is one that is born again. And the believer's victory in Christ is about the victorious life that we have in Christ. And that victorious life in Christ is as a result of us being one with Christ. I will say, know ye not that as many of you as were baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death, and that just as Christ have, was raised to life by the glory of the Father, we also have been brought into a new life. Romans chapter 6, 3 to 5. So, if you read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where we just took our text 57, if you read before that 57, read down, you see that it talks about uh, the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of the believers at the end. So, whatever resurrection we will experience is because Jesus Christ has experienced it. Hallelujah. So, it is said that we have been joined with him. We have been made one with him. And wherever he is seated, that's where we are seated. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23, and chapter 2, verse 5 to 6, that Christ was raised and seated at the right hand of God, and is above principalities and powers, and we are seated in him. And that is what you should align your mind to accept. We are seated with him at the right hand of God. Right hand of God means the place of power and authority. And so... That is the believer, and that believer has victory in Christ. Now, what victory? Victory over what? Victory over what? What has Christ done that we will have victory? We're going to look at four areas that we have victory. And then if we can hold on to these four areas, every other thing we call a problem will succumb. The devil fights our faith so much because our faith is what links us to this thing. Jesus Christ, let not your heart be trouble. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I used to say that God without Christ, no salvation. God. You, have, you know God. I believe in God. I know God. But you don't believe in Jesus Christ. You cannot be saved because only in Christ that God has vested the right to bring what? Salvation. Because we are to conform after the image of his son. Hallelujah. So we are sons of God. We are not God. We are God's we are not God. God says that we are children of God, just like Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We have been made one with Him. And that faith is what keeps us united. And so the devil fights that a lot. He fights it. In fact, spiritual warfare is about the warfare to destroy your faith. That's why Peter was told, Simon, Simon, the devil has desired to sift you like a wheat, but I've prayed for you that your faith fail not. 
He said, put on the whole armor of God. But he said, above all, put on the shield of faith, wherewith you'll be able to quench every fairy dart of the wicked one. Hallelujah. So our faith is what launches us into all these things. Who has been defeated? And what has Christ gotten victory for us? For what area of victory have we received? Number one, we have received victory over Satan the devil. Hallelujah. Satan the devil is presented in the scripture as our arch enemy. He is the enemy of God. Every evil that is happening in the world is masterminded by the devil and his agencies. And agents, those that are operating in the air, in the land, and in the sea, they are operating in the outer space. They are roaming around the earth, looking for who to devour, looking for who to penetrate and use. The Bible says, if an evil spirit leaves a man, he walks around everywhere, and when he comes back and see that man has not been occupied by Christ, what happens? He comes back and the person's situation becomes worse. If the person is wicked, his wickedness becomes times seven. Because seven demons have come to him. Devil oppressed through his demons. And his demons are scattered all over the world. In their millions. Just like we have numerous angels. That's how we have numerous what? Demons. And demons are certain angels. The Bible says, and the dragon and his angels fought back. Hallelujah. So, but Jesus Christ have defeated the devil. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. He said, and Christ, having disarmed the principalities and powers, he made an open spectacle triumphing over them by the cross. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his son. Colossians 1 13. And then in Luke 10 18 to 19, Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And he said, I've given unto you authority to tremble on serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. In Mark 16, 17 to 18, he says, And this sign shall accompany those who are believers. In my name they will drive out demons. And verse 17 to 18 of Acts 26, he said, I will rescue you and send you to them to open their eyes, turning them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. Now, all this place I've read is saying that Jesus Christ defeated the devil. How did he defeat the devil? The tool of the devil is death. Remember when God said, if you eat of this tree, you will surely die. In other words, when you are aligned with the devil, you are going to perish. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him will know what? Die, perish, but have everlasting life. So, for as much then we are flesh and blood, he became flesh and blood, that through his death, he might destroy the one who has the power of death, and that is the devil. And when that ultimate goal of the devil, which is to kill, to steal, to destroy, have been destroyed, what can he do again? What can he do again? When his foundations have been destroyed, what can the evil man do? Satan the devil. No matter what he does, he has been killed. That is why the Bible talks about the serpent. When the head of the serpent is cut off, what happened to the serpent? The serpent still has some life. There was a time, you know, we killed, in those days when I was a little boy, we killed a fowl for Christmas, you know. After killing the chicken, you know, the head is down, but the chicken got up and started running. Rather than we were pursued, it was running, 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 running. Until we cut it down and hold it strong until it died. That's how the devil does. The head has been bruised, but he's still shaking the body. Shaking the bodies, flinging the tail, flinging the tail. He has been defeated by Jesus Christ. The believer in Christ has victory over Satan because Jesus Christ has defeated the Satan, the devil. The devil has no power over you and I that are believers in Christ. For he has rescued us from his domain and has brought us into his own kingdom. We are no longer living in the kingdom of darkness. We are living now in the kingdom of light. A woman got married in America to a man from one of these Arabic countries who's a Muslim. And then, you know, she was taken by her husband to her town. And then they have already agreed that she will not be a Muslim. She'll just live, you know, her life like an American, you know, happily, no problem. But when they got there, the family members of the man decided that this woman must become what they want. And then the man must marry more wives. This man didn't want to do it initially, but because of the family pressure, he agreed. 
and the woman was now put under pressure with her little daughter. She was forced to dress, you know, with hijab and other things. She she was she didn't like it. Anywhere she tried to go, they were monitoring her. Until one day, she was able to run to American embassy in that country. When he ran to that place, she was secured for a while, and they quickly made arrangements and flew her back to America. Once she left that country and went into uh, the other country, not America, another country that is not like their own country, she became free. The other people could not do anything again because she had left their jurisdiction. She had left, left their community. She had left their kingdom. They cannot do her anything anymore. You see, Israel is bombarding uh, 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 Gaza now. If you leave Gaza, the bomb will not get you. If you stay in Gaza, the bomb may likely get you. So you say we have been rescued from the community, kingdom, domain of Satan the devil, the kingdom of darkness. And we have been rescued. We are now in that kingdom of God. We are now in what we call Jesus Christ embassy, as it were. Just like that woman went to American embassy and was secured. That is how we have entered into the embassy of Christ. And we are what? Secured in him. We are waiting for our evacuation into the kingdom of God, literally. But spiritually, we have been what? Rescued. And so the devil has no power over you. And when you understand this, Whenever you want to play a smart one, you know what to do. He says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. How do you resist the devil? Resist him in faith. What is faith? Faith is the revelation of whom God has made you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So that is what you should know. He says, and this sign shall follow those who believe in my name. They shall do what? Cast out devil. The devil tries to do it. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. You are not casting out the devil because you have done some, you have paid some price. It is because Christ has paid the price and have given you the power. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. Jesus did the battle, conquered, and gave us the victory. Hallelujah. And that victory is what we enforce when we say, you unclean spirit, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. It's not only when they are casting it out in the life of someone. When you see certain things not working the way they should be, you know that something is at work. But we say, an enemy has done this. I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. To bind is to prohibit. To lose is to allow. Whatever you bound on earth is bound in heaven. In other words, whatever you allow, and how do you allow? You allow by begging, by trying to, you know, trying to... The devil will not leave you alone. Just like a young lady who was working in an office and her boss always come to, you know, molest, black molestation, try to seduce her, and she will be saying, I beg, leave me alone. Do you think the boss will leave her? I beg, leave me alone. The one we see talking. You are a man, and your secretary is coming to seduce you, and he says, stop that, stop that, stop that. He will not stop it. Stop that and get out. You mean that you are serious? It's rebuke. It's not time for smiling. It's time to rebuke. And when you rebuke, you don't smile. Hallelujah. So, we have received victory over Satan, the devil. And now, we have been given the power to cast him out. He said, he gave them power and authority over devils to cast them out. He didn't say to discuss with them. He didn't say to learn how they operate in their kingdom. So I can operate like that in, in, in the church. No, cast them out. There are many Christians, when somebody say he used to be an agent of darkness, now he is uh, born again. They bring him, so how do, how do you people operate that place? How do you people attack Christians? Oh, it, by 12 midnight, that is when we wake up. So if Christians want to fight us, they have to wake up by 12 midnight and start fighting. Hey, oh, my brother, let's have Do you think that Satan will, that Satan didn't know that that person would be free? Satan already know that the person will be free. So he loads him with lies and lies. So that by the time he come and tell you, you begin to pattern your thoughts. Most touches are operated by the revelations of demons. Everything they do, their prayer, their Bible study, everything is based on how some people from the occult world have come to teach them. Some of them, their pastors themselves, we are in the occult. 
and they came out from the occult world, so, so to say, and instead of them to learn the ways of Christ, they carried those occultic doctrine and bring them into the church. Paul called them the doctrine of demons. And but it's working, it's working. Why won't it work? The devil is working with that key strategy, which is what deception. Deception. If you don't know that you have defeated the devil, you will always be frustrated. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and over all, not some, all the powers of the enemy. May God grant us boldness to exercise this victory in Jesus' name. I know he has granted us. Let us walk in that boldness. Let us wake up and say, no, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid anymore. It's time to exercise it. When things are going one kind, one kind, wanting to frustrate the, king, the work of God, I resist you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Cast it out with authority and power in Jesus' name. Number two, sin. Christ has redeemed us and have delivered us. We have victory over sin. The Bible says, but thanks be to God that you were slaves to sin. Romans 6, verse 17 to 18. You were slaves or servants of sin, but ye have obeyed with your heart the doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, you are now servants of what? Righteousness. Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. So sin has been defeated. Hallelujah. Sin has been rendered powerless. Sin has no power over the one who is a believer. Believer's victory covers the area of sin. Now, sin is not just that you have broken a law. No, uh, they gave a law. But no, the Bible says sin is transgression against the law. But actually, sin, your own sin, is not necessarily the transgression against the law. Even though it is based on transgression. The Bible says, as by one man's sin, one man's transgression, sin came into the world. And so you, be, you begin to suffer the consequence of sin, even when you have not sinned like the man who broke law. You have not broken any law, but yet you suffer the consequences. Let's say the president of your country you know, did something that uh, the foreigners who used to support the country don't like. And then, and then he break that rule and they decide to come and fight. Okay, look at what is happening in Gaza. When those Palestinians went to Israel to go and bomb those people on the October, October 7th and killed about 1,000 people and kidnapped some people, did they know that by today, over how many thousands of Palestinians Will, will be dead. As I'm talking to you right now, bombardment is going on. Their lands are taken away, as it were. If they knew, the people that are suffering, that are dying, we are they part of those who went to go and cause trouble in Israel. But somebody caused the problem, other people are suffering it. It's just like your father. Your father was a very wicked lecturer in university. Frustrating people. Frustrating people. And then one day, your son now goes to look for employment and goes to one of the biggest companies in the world. And the person who owned the company was one of those your father frustrated, if not for God's grace. And the bad time he said, oh, you qualify. What's your name? My name is, uh, my name is John Peter Side. John Peter Side, from where? From so, so, so Are you related to James Peter Side? Yo, yes, <laughs> he's my father. <laughs> he's my father. He used to be a lecturer at the university some years back. <laughs> Oh, so John, uh, James Peter said is your father. All right. I uh, will get back to you. But uh, you say I'm qualified. And you, I, I didn't say you are. I said we are going to get back to you. <laughs> because of your father, you lost that opportunity. Some years ago, I was walking down the road, you know, in my village. As I came back, I wanted to go to the village to visit. As I was walking down the hill, I saw a man driving. And the man looked at me. I said, are you? Like so, so, so person. I say, yeah. Is he your father? I say, yes, he's my father. Yo, enter, enter the car, enter the car. I say, uh, I say, your father used to be a nice man to me. Your father, your father was this. Your father, was, ah, my father did all that for you. <laughs> now I didn't know the man, but because of what he said, my father did. I was given a lift to where I was going. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 
So sin is just beyond you transgressing any law. Sin has become a yoke. Sin has become the nature of mankind because you have received mortality as a result of sin. Hallelujah. Because of what Adam have done, you have become a victim of sin. And so sin becomes a reproach. Sin begins to disgrace you. Sin begins to frustrate your life. Sin is a tool of the devil anyway. The devil as a person has been defeated, but if you still cling to sin, he will still use it as a root to be frustrating your life. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It is not that because you, did, you lied yesterday and fought somebody and did that, and that is when you came short of the glory of God. From the day you were born, you were born not without the glory of God. You were born with the glory of man, the glory of the fallen man, the darkness of the devil. You are working in your own. Any light you see, you are working on what you produce. So all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But that glory you fell short is not because of what you did. It's because of who you are. You are down. The Bible tells us how we all became sinners. Say, therefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, and death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Did you see that? For that all have sinned. What is for that? For what? For as by one man sin came into the world and death came through sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So if you say, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, you have seen how you fell. Hallelujah. But the good thing is that God have rescued us from that in Christ Jesus. When Jesus Christ died, he also paid for your sin. That sin of Adam has been taken care of. Now, you say about, oh, but I, 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 I sinned because I break law. No, no, no. The law, the law, and you're breaking the law, is not what made you a sinner. And I want to repeat that. Look at what the law did. The law simply, whether it is the law of Moses or the law of your village or the law of anything, the law only exposed that you are a sinner. You see, some, uh, uh, somebody say, you know the thief, you know the thief. Then they put him in an office where there is money. And that money is not going to be touched. And he, he knows that only him can approve how much money that passed there. And then opportunity has come. And he began to steal the money. A man is a good man. Oh, this government is bad. Bad government. We must remo remove this president, President uh, Jerome. President Jerome is an incompetent president. President Jerome is a foolish president. President Jerome has frustrated our country. If you vote me, James, I am going to change this country in two years. I'm going to make this country the best country in the whole world. Just remove Jerome, a useless man. He has frustrated us. They make him president. The whole country will shout again. Oh, we are dying, you know. James is the devil. James is the devil. So, um, uh, give me time, you know. I told you two years. Let, let's make it four years. Um, four years. James, you are the devil. Uh, okay, you know, four years is too small. Give me another four years. I'm going to do it better. Uh, four years has finished. Uh, James, uh, I can, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. The next person that comes, we, we take care of it. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> you see? You have become, you are what, that opportunity exposed who you are. That position, some of you, some character will to manifest through your life when they place you in some place and they will know that you are a very wicked soul. But before you get to that place, you are nice. You are not nice. The, the wickedness is in you waiting for the heat that will bring it out. Just like when you put Lipton into what, hot water. If you put Lipton into cold water, no problem. Put very cold ice water. You don't see anything really coming out. But when you put it into hot water, once it enters there, pim, shia, everywhere is like that. So you see that sin is in you. Have what say, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? The evil I don't like to do, I see myself doing it because it's a body of sin. But thanks be to God that he has removed that reproach from us. Sin has no dominion over us, for we have been saved and removed, not only from the law, but we have been given the grace of God to live above sin. 
Now, God, Jesus Christ in Christ abolished, God in Christ abolished the law of Moses and all the moral law because you don't need the law. He now puts his spirit in you that guides you into all truth. Now, the spirit in you is now what makes you to live a life that is wonderful that the law could not do. The Bible says what the law could not do, God did by sending his son who was without sin. You see, now there was a woman who was married to a man and the man was very, very harsh on that woman. She, he made some rules and regulation on how, when the woman wake up, how she will cook, how she would, everything the woman, the woman will do, the man listed it out. And any day the woman did not do it, trouble. So the woman was afraid and was keeping to those laws to avoid trouble, to avoid being beaten by the husband. After some years, unfortunately, the man died. And some time passed, the woman remarried. And the, the house where the woman is living uh, with the former husband, she inherited the house. So the, the new husband came to live with her in that house. But no one thing, this new husband doesn't fight her, doesn't, uh, uh, no, didn't give her any law. But this woman was still keeping all those rules she, she was keeping for her first husband, even without any law. Nobody was saying, if you break it, I'll beat you. But yet she was doing it. How did she know? One morning she came and saw where she pasted the laws in the kitchen. And then she saw that she was doing exactly this without even looking at that thing. You see, the Bible says that we have been saved unto good works that he has fashioned us to do. So I don't need to, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. I don't need to read law and struggle to be keeping the law because I become righteous inside and my righteousness manifests without the law. But because of my faith in Christ, I walk under the grace of God. And the grace of God that is empowering me helps me to say no to every form of ungodliness. So when I say do not preach morality, you don't teach morality to someone who is able. He cannot. He will struggle. That's why most of you who are pastors, you have children and you give them too much law. Too much law. I'm monitoring you. I'm being. You see your children, they begin to behave like good children when they are with you. Once you are no more, they manifest who they really are. What have you achieved? But you see, that one of your children who truly received Jesus, who truly have the Spirit of God in him, without all those your rules and regulations, he is living even better than you in Christ. So that's what we call grace. You say we are not under the law, but under grace. What does it mean? It is that under the law, we are judged for sin. And then we are forced to do the right thing, not because we love doing it. We are forced, we are scared. But under grace, we are empowered to live right. And Christ has been judged for our sin. So it says, now there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And again it says that, you know, uh, 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 that God has given us the ministry of reconciliation, no longer keeping the record of sin, but has given us what? The privilege to, to declare that he has reconciled us to himself. So we are not living under any law, but we are living righteously, better than those who live by any law. When you love me because I, I, you, are, you are forced to love me, that your love is one kind. Any opportunity you see to, to move out, you move. But when you love me because you love me, you will be able to do things for me, not because I will kill you or beat you or slap you if you don't do it, but you will do it from your spirit. In fact, even when I, when I don't want it, you'll be doing it. That is what it is. That's why God said the fruit of the spirit is what? Love. Love now produces joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. Hallelujah. So we have victory over sin. It says, sin shall have no dominion over you, for you are not under the law. Because sin becomes powerful when there is a law. But when there is no law, sin cannot do you anything. All right? It's just like, you know, one president in one country, they have given him the list of people he wants to execute. They have listed the name. They put the, the paper on his table. He was to come that morning 
and then uh, sign the execution paper, and they will execute those prominent citizens of the country that he has considered their, his enemies. Unfortunately, that night he died. <laughs> he didn't come to sign the paper again. Another president took off and picked up the paper and saw it, <laughs> threw it away. That paper has no dominion over those people. If that man were alive, that paper would, that law would have had dominion over those people. They would have been killed. But because the man was no longer alive, those documents were rendered useless, invalid. Hallelujah. So that is what Christ has done for us. Christ has destroyed the root. And so when the law has been destroyed, sin has been rendered powerless. Now we live righteously, not because we are trying to keep any law, but because righteousness is part and parcel of our life. Hallelujah. All right. The next thing that Christ has given us victory. Now remember, all this victory has been given over. Some people are still laboring in the same thing. So you are knowing the victory you have. So that you can stand and if, oh, so I am not doing this. No, 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 no. I will live right because it is my nature. I'm not living right because God will slap me if I don't. I'm living right because it is me. Just like the pig can never live clean. It can be forced to be clean. But when you give the opportunity, it will go back to death. But the sheep will always want to be clean. Because it was not like death. If the, the sheep was to thrown into death, the sheep will struggle to come out of it. So many people have been giving, we have been giving victory over Satan. Or some, people are, some Christians are still being molested by Satan. Many Christians, all of us, all Christians, all born again child of God Christians, I mean all believers, have victory over sin, but many are still struggling with sin because they are law-minded. Once you are no longer law-minded, you will not struggle with sin, you will live righteously with that law. Hallelujah. Now we have victory over the world. That's number three. Victory over the world. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 to 5 says, Everyone born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? He is the, only, the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then you are victorious over the world. What is the world? All the things that the world is made up of. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. The pride of life. Talking about what? People being counted themselves valuable because of material things they have. Because of the passion for sexual per perversion and other evil perversion they have. And then arrogance and pride. I am something. Do you know me? Do you know who I am? The Bible says, Paul right? it says that I seek not to be anything save Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. Love not the world nor the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, are not from the Father, but of the world. And the world will pass away with the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abide forever. So through our faith in Christ, we have victory over the world. We walk with the Lord in the light of this revelation, then we experience the victory over the corrupt system of this world, not controlled by the elemental spirits that try to show us that our, our value and our validity is tied to material things. When they begin to they have turned Christianity to be materialism. Now, I, I have fame, I have crowd, I have money, then I am something. If you want to know somebody who are who, who they call fathers in the faith, fathers in the faith is not somebody who is a firm believer in the Lord, who walk with the Lord in the light of his word. No. Fathers in the faith are those who are famous, have money, have crowd, just have money, hmm? plenty money, have properties here and there that you don't even know where they are located. Have thousands of people following you, calling you hey, hey, King, King, this glory to him. <laughs> when, they are calling, when you are there, you, you, you are becoming a new God. And you, if somebody wants to talk to you, they must kneel down. 
before they can talk to you. And that is what makes you, do you, do you know me? Do, do you know me? Do you know that I am, just go, go and Google my name on, and, and you see, you can know, know, know who I am. You know who you are talking to? That is how the world is valued. This man is a great man because he's the president. This man is a great man because he's the, he's the, he's the owner of the multinational company. This man is a great man because he, 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 he had 25 bachelor's degrees, 15 master's degrees, and 10 doctorate degrees. That's one man. Had 10 PhDs. If he comes to an occasion and you want to invite him to come to the stage, I call him. Let's say his name is uh, James Peter Sai. You now say, let us invite Dr. James Peter Sai. He will not come out. He will sit down. Who is Dr. James Peter Sai? You have to call him. Let us welcome Dr. 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 Doctor, 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 James Peter Side. Hey, 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 that's me. That's me. That's what they call the loss of the eyes. Materialism. The things that people can see. Oh, I have this. I have that. I have five houses in the United States of America, five in London, five in Afghanistan. Five in Gaza, five in uh, uh, Pal uh, Palestine. <laughs> By the time they destroy all those things, you see the person. Why is he down? His, his, his head is still down. He's still a human being, but he's demoralized because his value, his value is tied to those things. I say that is not you. Have victory, but nothing in this world gives you value. You are who you are. When they removed all the clothes from Jesus Christ and hung on the cross, he was still the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It didn't change anything. But when you are happy because of what you have and you are sad because of what you don't have, it shows that that is where. When Jesus Christ said, do not build, store your, 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 your treasures on earth, where the thieves and the, but store your treasures in heaven. It doesn't mean that you should pack your money and go to heaven, bank international and go and bank it. No, he's saying that do not put your trust and your confidence in the things that I see because they are temporal. But the things that eyes do not see, they are eternal. That is heaven. Are you hearing me? That's why what I need from to get the whole world and lose his soul. You build the best house in the whole world and then you sleep and you didn't wake up. What happened? That's all. Somebody built the, one of the most beautiful houses in the world. With billions of dollars, and then he died. Everything is over. Another person will now come and do what? Decide what happens to those things. Even the clothes he's wearing, they can decide to remove all the clothes and naked him. They cannot do anything again because you are dead. Now I say, if you are, if or if the value of your life is tied to what you have, once you are dead, you leave everything. That we say, we do not put your trust in what you have. For you came to this world with nothing, and you will live with what? Nothing. When that president died, they just packed him out of the government house, removed all his clothes, wrapped him with white cloths, put him into a bakery, and threw him into the ground, and covered it. And everybody, everybody forgot him. They can only mention his name, but he's gone. Somebody dies now. Everything, he's a PhD holder, he's a doctorate, whatever degree he has. That's the end. Nobody can inherit that degree. Yes, they can inherit your property or that, but you don't, you, at least you yourself, you have lost everything. So, it, I didn't say you shouldn't have material things or acquire things or be famous or have all these things, but don't put your heart on those things. Hold them with small hand because today they are there. Tomorrow they are not there. Even if it's your body that you are you are paying attention, decorating. Yeah, 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 yeah. One day, one man, don't eat this, don't drink that, don't chop this, don't chop that after everything. Be in the gym 24 hours, work out. I'm always working out. Somebody even died while working out. Work out. He died inside, work out. Life is not sustained by this. The Bible says, life is not sustained by, 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 by the things you see, by the abundance of the things you have. 
I remember some years ago when I was in secondary school, I was sick and I came back home and then uh, my mother was taking care of me, but I was feeling like going back to school. I said, Mama, I have to go back to school. Oh, our exam is getting near. I need to go and prepare. But you see, you're not well yet. I said, no, it doesn't matter. Oh, I need to go. My mother told me, look, your life is more important than that school you're going. If you die, school finishes. But if you are alive, you can always go to school. So you're not going anywhere until you get well. Life is more important than what you use in taking care of it. That's what my mother told me. Said, can hear jazz here. Hallelujah. So I now relax. I didn't go again until I got very well before I went back to school. When we were at the university, we had some student, a student who went to the swimming pool to play with other people. What happened? He got drowned. That was the end of school. Our, our mathematics teacher gave us mathematics test when we were secondary school. He said. He, in fact, that man, he will flog the hell out of you if you fail. And that time, to mathematics was my problem. <laughs> but it was a problem for many people. I don't know about you. And so he gave us some assignment. And I, I didn't sleep that night. I struggled. I struggled to do it. And yet I couldn't finish. While I was going to school that morning, I was afraid because I'm going to be flogged. But while I was about to enter the compound, I saw everybody sad. Everybody sad. Some people are crying. People are mourning. I said, what, what happened? They said, oh, you didn't hear? So what did they hear? Our mathematics teacher is dead. To be sincere. <laughs> the first thing that came to my heart was, oh, thank God, they will not flood me today. Then I remember that this man, I'm not going to see him again. Then I also joined others and started crying. <laughs> but the first thing was that mathematics assignment over. And no, in fact, when we go to school that day, nobody went to class. We had to sit down outside and start mourning for our teacher. No. At least no flogging. To the, that is the, all the law he kept died that day. Because he was no more. Hallelujah. So before we got born again, the forces of the devil that controls the world had power over us. When he calls us, we powerlessly flow. But through the divine grace we have in Christ, we have escaped the power and the forces of corruption in the world. Jesus said, Jesus Christ said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the book of Galatians 4, 3, it says, even so, when we were children, we were under the bondage of the elements of this world. <laughs> I remember when I, when I was a little boy in, in primary school, I, I, I would say that I was not under the control of the elements of this world. <laughs> ah, wonderful. We wrote the exam, and I think, I, I don't know what I got, uh, 27 out of uh, 30. Of my class, and that and they say twenty seven out of thirty. Yes, no, no, no. I got about uh, about uh, twenty eight out of thirty, and they say I pass. They say I pass, but it's one of the bad pass. And I was just happy just because they wrote pass for me. I don't care about the number, so I was going home joyfully to go and take my report card to my father. <laughs> and I saw one girl crying, crying. I said, Why are you crying? Killing for what? You fail? No. Let me see your result. Second. You got second and you are crying? You are a fool. Me, see my own. Me, I'm not crying. I'm happy. At least I pass. They say I pass. That is my joy. And she was looking at me. Because I was not carried away. We really like you put pass. We like not to pass. Next time I go to next class. <laughs> I only pray for third time. God, no, allow me to fail. I feel good to this. Praise the Lord. So be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. That the things of this world does not become what determine your value anymore. As a child of God, you have victory over that. When a child of God, a true child of God becomes the president of a country, he's not interested in swindling the whole money for, his, for himself. He's interested in the well-being of his country. I remember a Christian brother who was made commissioner for education in his, in his state. He worked tirelessly. No teacher was old during his tenure. Everything about the education was wonderful. He never ate a dime. He didn't even buy a new car. By the time he finished his tenure and came down, he came back with his old car. I was driving to his old house. And his villagers were very angry with him. Foolish man. 
and others will go there and make money. You go there and come back you know, empty-handed. You see how our people are corrupt? We say we have corrupt president, corrupt governors. They are corrupt because the people, the society themselves are corrupt. Is it not from them we pick the leaders? So in Christ, that corruption goes away. Hallelujah. And so you become, if you say born again Christian, who is president or governor or minister or a senator or MP that is corrupt, but he says he's born again, he's wicked, he's born again, it's because he has not realized that he has victory. And so he's still under the yoke of darkness. Therefore, Paul says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty of victory or of, uh, 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 freedom that Christ has given for us. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So many of us believers are entangled with the yoke of bondage. We have refused to enforce this victory that we have in Christ. Finally, we have victory over death. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he never died again, did he? That was the ultimate victory over death. Now, many people who died and rose from the dead, as we read their story from the Bible, all of them still died, two of us. Everybody that has, was raised to life before, all of them are dead or will die. But Jesus Christ rose never to die again. And has given us that victory. Then you will ask me, eh? if we have victory over death and Jesus Christ has conquered death, why is it that many believers are still dying? Why is it that even Paul, who wrote that Jesus Christ has conquered death for us, he is dead? Why is it that all the apostles are dead? Why is it that many men of God today are dying? Children of God are dying. Why are they dying? But we have victory over death. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Now, let us see 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 25. Say, then the end will come when he, Jesus, will hand over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he put all his enemies under his feet and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. For Jesus Christ, he has conquered death. But we are going to follow suit. The Bible says we shall not all die, but we shall be changed. Because we have the matter, but we must lose it and take a new one. Either through resurrection from the dead or through transformation on the day of what we call the rapture. So in our previous lessons, we have told you that we have victory over Satan, done and dusted, victory over this, over sin done and dusted. It's not a futuristic, it had been done. Victory over the world, done and dusted. But when it comes to victory over death, yes, Christ has conquered death for us, but the manifestation of this death, victory, will be on the day of resurrection. Any other thing you can have now, maybe healing if you are sick, maybe you die, you can wake up, but you can still die again. If Christ if Christ tarries and you become too old, you can still die again. You are healed, you can get sick again and get healed again. Or if you can remain healthy, it is all probable. You can, you can trust God for healing and be healed. But a time will come when you may not even get healed, you die. There are people who, even after the prayer for healing, they still die. Why? Because we are in the, in, in, in the body. Our spirit man has been transformed. Our mind is being reformed through our word, through the word of God that we believe. But our body will have to be removed to receive a new body. We call it bodily salvation. So we have been saved. We are being saved. That's a transformation of our mind, the renewal of our mind. And we shall be saved. That is the liberation of our body. The Bible tells us, but if Christ is in you, your body may die because of sin, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your what? Mortal body. No, it will transform your mortal body to an immortal body. Hallelujah. The Bible says again in Ephesians 1, 13 to 14, saying, in whom you trusted after you had the gospel of your salvation, and you have been what? Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is an earnest, guaranteeing our inheritance 
unto the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. So, understand that your spirit, your mind, your body are all saved, but they all happen in a sequence. One, your spirit man is saved, your mind is constantly being renewed, but your body will be saved. That is an eternal life that will be manifested. Eternal life is already at work in you, but it will manifest on the day of resurrection. There are so many scriptures you can read about that. On the last day, at the tomb of God, the dead in Christ shall rise unto eternal life without dying again. We close by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I declare unto you, verse 50 to 57, I declare unto you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the perishable. <clears throat> Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a flash, in a twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet. The trumpet of the Lord will sound, and the dead in Christ will rise, imperishable, and we all will be changed from mortality to immortality. Hallelujah. And then the same will come through. Death have been swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, grave, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of, the, uh, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who has given us the victory. Paul, writing in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1 to 8, he says, For we know that if our earthly body is being destroyed, we have a new body from God, eternal and prepared for us in heaven. Hallelujah. We have the deposit of the Spirit guaranteeing that we will receive that body. Never grow, never grow in the land where we will never grow old. That is what we are going to have, a new body. I have a new body. Praise the Lord. I have a new life. Yes, that is what has been said. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The first to rise from the dead. And we that are God's children today will subsequently follow, according to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, Christ, the first fruit, and at his return, those who believe in him. So we have victory over sin. We have victory over Satan. It is not negotiable. It is done. It is dusted. It is not what you are going to experience in the future. It has been done. We have victory over the world. It has been done. You can enforce it today. We also have victory over death. Over death. And that is guaranteed by the Holy Spirit that is in us. But the actual manifestation will take place on the day of resurrection. When you will rise never to die again. There will be no more death for me. No more, no more. There will be no more death for me for all eternity. Hallelujah. So if you die now as a child of God, you have the guarantee that you will rise again. Paul writing in the book of 1 Thessalonians, he said to the brethren, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, he said, But I will have you not to be grand brothers and sisters concerning those who have died, that you sorrow not like those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ rose again, even so, we also believe that those who sleep with the Lord will he bring with him. For this is what we say in the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will not go before those who have died. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to the air, to meet with the Lord, and so shall we be with the Lord forever. And that will be when the trumpet shall sound from the mansions above, who live without saying goodbye. When the trumpet shall sound, all the saints of God shall be raptured. Raptured means shall be caught up and taken away from this world, so that the world will be made anew and will be returned back to the world. The Bible says, Behold, I make all things new, and I see the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. So after we are gone, this world will pass through this Sabbath day, a time of re reconstruction and republication. 
and then every old things will pass away and all things will become new and then we shall return to live and to dwell in the new heaven and the new earth forever and ever. That is when eternity begins. Eternity does not begin when you die. Some people say when you die, you face eternity. No, no, no. Nobody faces eternity. At death. Eternity means endlessness. You will, that is forever. No. Every death that people die today is temporary death. It's all temporary death. You will rise again. The Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 12, he said, those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake up. Those who have done right, when I say done right, the right thing to do is to accept Jesus Christ. Those who have believed in Jesus will rise unto eternal life because they have the spirit of eternal life in them. But those who have no spirit of eternal life in them will be damned, damned forever. And that is what awaits those who have refused. So in concluding this spiritual warfare, we are not fighting to win. We are fighting because we have won. We must fight to enforce our victory over Satan, over sin, over the world, and over death. Meanwhile, the victory over death is enforced through what? Healing. Resurrection. When somebody dies, you command him to come back to life until the person is willing to go and rest. Eventually, the end will come and then we will enter into the glory that will never end. In the line, we shall not end. I am his and he is mine. With that, we come to the end of study three, spiritual warfare. If you want to listen more, please go back and rewind. If you want the materials, join the class and then you'll be privileged to have the material. Those of you who are students already, it will be sent to you. Your exams also will come and then we go to study four next week. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the things we have learned tonight. We trust that the Holy Spirit will teach us and open our mind, give us better understanding of what I will share tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Once again, know that in CDI class, we give all class offerings. And wherever you are, if you have been blessed by the teaching, it is incumbent on you to package something and give an offering to the glory of God. Father, accept our offering we give to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, we, um, we close today. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are done. I'll see you again next week, Thursday, for study four. God bless you and good night.